is going to be a video while driving day <laughs> um, because apparently the traffic is so bad that from Village Oak part of Sedona to West Sedona is an hour because I accepted an order and then it was like 57 minutes. I'm like, that should only be like a 20 something minute drive. Um, so I canceled the order. If I happen to get there and it's still up, I'll, I'll accept it again. But then it's just to drive back to Village Oak, which I'm like, I don't know if I really want to go through traffic today. So I'm the one order I've done so far might be the only order I'm doing today. Um, but it's just like, okay. What I wanted to talk about that, again, just popped up into my head the other time while I was driving just a few minutes ago was how different, like, okay, rewind. When I was younger, we moved around quite a bit um, because my mom had, like, different job opportunities in different states and stuff. So I've been to California, Arizona, uh, Florida. Those were like the main points where we stayed for quite a while, enough for me to go to school. And I also went to school in St. Lucia for two years, um, which would have been like fifth and sixth grade, um, according to American standards. So it just always amazes me how different my education was going from state to state. Um, obviously going from country to country, it varied for sure, but like going from state to state. Um, and also just like sometimes I would repeat subjects depending on what year or what place I just come from. Um, you know, your level, my level of intelligence varied apparently based on like where I was because sometimes I would go places and I hadn't learned something. Um, so then of course I was like less smart because I didn't know what to build off of, right? And then in other places, like in Maryland, I was considered really intelligent because, you know, I read a lot and I knew a lot and I answered questions. Like, no one there really participated in classes and just because I raised my hand a lot, I was smarter, you know? There were other places, like in New Jersey, where I kind of struggled a little bit. Like, being in New Jersey definitely upped my level of competition academically because, you know, I was surrounded by all these people who knew more than I did, who did better than I did. Um, going from Baltimore to New Jersey, like, suddenly I was surrounded by people who actually wanted a future, who had plans for the future, who knew what colleges they were going to. As, like, a first-generation, well, technically I was born in St. Lucia. Is that first-generation? I was born in St. Lucia. I came to um, America with my mom. But, like, I don't know how, if that's first generation. I guess I'm first generation. But, you know, we had no real, like, I had no reference of, okay, when you're done with high school, you go to university because no one in my family had done that. Um, or at least not in America. And it's just, like, I had no frame of reference. So here I was coming into middle school in New Jersey and then the last year of middle school where a lot of people probably already had like a lot of reference a lot of you know they had things to go off of they had parents who were able to help them plan things out you know they were able to take the pre-SATs they knew what the SATs and the ACTs were I did not you know so all these things and yeah, so it felt like I was, like, under... I was able to build up up to, like, my senior year of high school. I was able to take all APs. You know, I built myself up. But it always felt like there was a little bit of a detriment going from one place to another because nothing ever correlated in terms of education, which I find really strange. Um, but the funniest thing for me is the fact that I went in cursive in California and, like, maybe this third or fourth grade maybe I don't really know what grade it was but like early elementary school and writing cursive was something that I did quite regularly depending on the situation and now I use it way more often um but it always surprises me how many people don't know how to read cursive <laughs> and for me that's just like the fastest way to write 
so I got into like middle school, high school, and you know, we would have these um, exams for English where we would have to write um, a number of essays in like that one class period. So I would choose cursive because that was the fastest way for me to write and it would flowed a lot easier and you know, my hand was less likely to cramp with it. And sometimes I would have teachers who understood it and other teachers would be kind of surprised. And I never understood why, because I'm like, doesn't everyone learn how to do cursive? And I think now it's like being completely removed from like learning. <laughs> um, but it's just so crazy how the area that you are learning in can drastically affect your life. I mean, and like, you know, inner cities, you may not learn as much as people in, like, suburban, suburban, suburban areas do, like, something like economics, which I had the, um, privilege of get learning in, um, New Jersey in high school as, like, one of my, uh, what's, what's it, what's it called? Extra, not extracurriculars, like, the, <laughs> those extra classes you'd take just for like fun you know and you know to be honest if I was in Baltimore I probably would have would not have had that same opportunity possibly depending on the school I was going to so it's just like wild to me how something as simple as like learning cursive depending on what state what time what generation you're in wouldn't would or would not have been learned um I had like a younger art history teacher which I would write in cursive for his class as well and for his essays and he was just like at first he like he was like you write in cursive I would always get like the best grades in that class I loved him he was so fun but he was like you write in cursive and I was like yeah he was like can you just use pen <laughs> just so it's easier for me to read? I was like, okay. And I'm just like, I'm appalled. I really am. At like, I don't know. And even the fact that history is being changed and like things are being changed in schools and it's not consistent. I learned so much about black history in Baltimore. And if I hadn't gone to Baltimore, I would not have learned as in depth about you know black history as I did and that is crazy to me I learned about people well I, I'm not gonna list names now because I don't even I know there was like you know Sojourner Truth Phyllis Wheatley I did a whole essay on like Phil, I don't know if that was her last name but I like in Baltimore it was like the entire English class was based on black history and black authors and you know it's a black centric district that it was like every book was based on blackness in a way or like like black like MLK Malcolm X but going to other like traditionally whiter schools you would only hear hear about MLK or Malcolm X and that was it you didn't hear about like the more lesser known individuals of history and like now that it might not even be as incorporated into certain classes it's kind of crazy to me it's really wild to me that first of all history is being rewritten or taken out of history books but also like go, being in the south or being in the north as crazy as it is because you know we should be in a more progressive country at this point whether you're in the south or the north is going to affect how much you learn about black history or any kind of history and that's insane <laughs> um you know I probably learned more about like geology Native American um things like being in Arizona and like California maybe than in the north so it's like I understand having a level of personalized history to the state that you're in for your students because maybe you might want them to know a little bit more centralized about your region, about your area, but shouldn't there also be like a more general like awareness across all the states? <laughs> like how can we have so much like such a disparity of knowledge in children and adults about history depending on where you're you're in like 
that is wild and then you have these debates online about people who have different understandings about what animals are or about what you know certain things in history are and what happened when and what the actual details of things are and one person might know a lot more and other people might know a lot less and it's just like this would not be a problem if our education system in and of itself was so unstandardized like you have standardized testing but we don't have standardized education and it's like why are we okay with like for example the stereotype of people in the south being slower or like whatever and people in the north being faster or whatever it's also in the education system because for one the education pace is different you know being in the south I think the education system is a bit slower and like you spend longer on topics being in New Jersey we went through things so quickly but then even that's not fully true because like I said being in like a suburban area versus an urban area is going to differ in how your education comes across it's going to differ in the types of teachers that you have access to who may or may not be passionate about you know their subject who may not even know as much about their subjects as they should maybe they go to us going to a certain college might also affect how much knowledge someone has about the topic that they're being t like they're going to be teaching you know being in an inner city versus like a more suburban school is going to affect maybe your class size how many teachers you have you know discipline issues um it's just like it's so crazy to me and I did not even mean to turn this video into like an essay on the disparity of American education but like just on personal experience recognizing those small simple things right again recognizing that when I was down here in certain subjects maybe I wasn't as proficient or as you know well-rounded as I was expected to be and that was like a detriment to me not to mention like hey I just lived in this last area like for five years and we didn't learn this or I just lived in this area for a year and this other area for two years and I've like I've never experienced this level of diversity in my education I've never experienced this much you know I had an entire two years being in St. Lucia where all my history was Caribbean history not American history so me coming into the United States again and being like dropped into just like American and black history that was all new to me when someone else growing up in that might be completely different and it's just like why are we so quick to judge people about being smart or not when it's nothing to do with education it's, not, it's nothing to do with their intelligence it has everything to do with their education or lack of education and then I don't know how like if you're from another country and your education system is more standardized or maybe you might find your information or your like differs like again naturally I think between countries education is going to differ because you know you're learning about your country's history you're less likely to learn a full topic of like American history if you live in somewhere in Asia possibly maybe you might learn about your history in relation to America but you're not going to learn full American history so when you immig immigrate immigrate to another emigrate to another country and you have to learn their ways of life you have to learn their history it shouldn't count against you that you don't know American history and I feel like a lot of people like obviously again in each country but in America it's so expected that if you're in America you know everything about America and it's just like no <laughs> that's not the case like I've never learned half the stuff you've probably learned, you know? I probably know more about black history than the average American does, and even that's not as much anymore, because I, I just, it's been a long time. But, you know, we're always learning more and more each day, and learning more things, and more and more things are being exposed, and social media just brings all these things to light about, like, things that one person might consider a conspiracy, another person knows as history you know and it's just 
the disparity of knowledge is wild and I just think like for one we have to embrace this level of always being willing to learn and learning new things and I think what's being confused nowadays is the idea that having more knowledge is somehow detrimental it's like I don't think people are aware that you know children of all people and anyone can always judge what they want to perceive as fact or what they want to accept over what they don't like I think we should be exposed to as much knowledge as possible without being like being expected to believe everything or being expected to accept everything but at least having the knowledge and the awareness and then we can judge for ourselves how we feel about it should be the precedent rather than removing information and making information like soliciting information and censoring things so that you can't make a judgment whatsoever is completely irresponsible you know I I really feel like that like it's super irresponsible to tell someone whether a child or an adult that okay you don't have a right to listen to this thing because according to us it's wrong or according to us it's factually incorrect okay it might be factually incorrect thank you for telling me that according to your fact checkers who may not even be educated and may just be doing a google search that this is wrong but at least let me hear the under like hear the knowledge and apply for myself whether it's true or not or do my own research like I feel like instead of having fact checking we should be like or fact checkers in terms of like censoring videos it should be that okay here's this video here's what you know maybe google might say okay hey just so you know this isn't fully correct or whatever or there's a list of other resources from different perspectives because somehow perspective is being censored um opinions are being censored but like here's a list of different resources that might have varying views but here are other perspectives of this topic and give people a way to broaden their understanding and again choose from that entire accumulation of knowledge and say you know what you know I kind of believe some of this but I don't believe all of this and you know for me that's where I stand in terms of religion you know growing up Christian Um, I had a lot of questions that were outside of biblical standards, and now I lean to a more spiritual um, understanding, but other people might grow up in the same way and lean completely to atheism and, you know, um, more scientific things, and I personally see science as, like, like, upholding certain things, and I don't know, I just... (laughs) <laughs> there are some things I choose to be more interested in now because I have a, a general knowledge of multiple things and I can choose, okay, you know what? I choose not to be so entirely super focused on this thing because for me, there are bigger things in life, right? And at least I have that ability or that, um, what's it called? Not potential, but like I have that, chance I guess um privilege I have that privilege to do that because I have more of a broader insight and I would love to study more religions and more spiritual texts so I can get more understanding of how other cultures kind of see things and accept things and I'm okay with that and (laughs) yeah that's that's my thoughts on that topic again I didn't plan on it to be this long or this intense but it's just I don't know I feel like knowledge is just being so blown out of proportion nowadays I guess like you're either not knowledgeable enough but then you're not encouraged to learn more or learn differently or you're like too knowledgeable and you're not allowed to share this or because other people aren't as educated in it like the comments against you are worse because it's like oh you're just pulling this out of thin air and it's just like nah I did did, like research on 
20 different websites five different encyclopedias or whatever it's just it's so funny to me how different perspectives are just because of difference in education and difference in willingness to learn like so many people are taught that because they're not smart in something that they have no right to learn anything new or to grow in their knowledge or you know like for me personally I might I really love learning right I love learning new topics I love learning learning new things but when it came to tests and stuff in school in certain subjects, I might have understood the lecture perfectly fine, but in terms of applying it and doing tests, it was terrible for me. Like, I might have been doing the per- like the correct procedure to solve the problem, but I would get the wrong answer. And because of that, it, like, dampened my respect for school because it was like, I'm learning, I'm understanding, but somehow because I'm not reaching a certain like standard in a test I'm not smart enough you know and it's just like I don't know if that's ever going to change really but I would like it to I don't know how it would though I know like again we're always trying to standardize things to make it easier to grade and easier to um like have a, a metric but for me, that was the case, but I still like learning because I know I recognize that learning in itself was not the problem for me. It was testing and having to apply the knowledge sometimes. Like, just in some certain math classes, I might understand the topic generally, but in terms of applic- applying it, it was just like, you know? And I was okay with that. And I don't know, I think we have to be a little more open-minded as a society that if someone doesn't maybe apply themselves in a certain subject or, you know, one version of something, for example, in science, I might be so much better in, you know, doing experiments and writing, doing the experiments than writing the scientific essay. Or I might be doing better in the scientific essay than I am in doing like the math for example you know and I think that should be celebrated of like okay which part are you good at which part are you not and I know it's not possible fully to grade every single student according to their strengths and weaknesses individually and to say oh you know you're really good at this you're not good at this so I'll give you like a B for example um that's not always the case and that's not always the fact and it's okay um but don't make students don't make children especially feel like they are completely incapable of learning just because they're not good in your class (laughs) um I'm gonna stop rambling now that is all I have to say about it for now and I know this has nothing to do with travel but it was just kind of some of my musings um and maybe I'll make another channel uh, just about my musings but yeah (laughs) that is my outlook on the American education system (laughs) I will see you guys in the next video um as I'm stuck in this traffic that is probably gonna take very long (laughs) um I will see you guys later bye